Laundrap has been in existence only for about 10 weeks now, um, so still a very, very new business. Um, the idea, I won't profess to, uh, to claim the idea, it wasn't my idea, um, it was actually the idea of our chairman. Um, he actually approached me um, for a mutual network um, actually just about 12 months ago. And um, he initially approached me with the idea um, to essentially revolutionise the laundry and dry cleaning industry um, by providing a digital service. And we hadn't really agreed what that digital layer was going to be, but obviously we were quite um, inspired by what was happening um, within the hotel space with Airbnb and obviously what was going on with Uber and the taxi industry. Um, and we felt that actually the laundry and dry cleaning industry um, was probably quite open to that type of disruption um, in terms of providing a digital solution. So the reality is I actually thought the initial idea was quite bonkers, to be honest. <laughs> um, but the more I thought about it, over the space of just a few hours, I had a conversation with my wife and did some research. I actually realized it was actually genius. Um, it was a great idea. It's an industry that has just not been touched by digital before. Um, the actual dry cleaning industry, laundry industry, hasn't really changed um, in the last four or five decades. Um, it actually hit its peak um, in the 1980s. Um, there are about 12 or 13,000 laundrettes and dry cleaning uh, facilities across the UK. Um, today, there's about two or 3,000 um, across the UK. So there's been some consolidation in the space. But as I said before, it hasn't really been touched by digital. So there was a great opportunity to really disrupt that space. Um, so that's the reason we set up Laundrap. This was a fast track opportunity. Um, there was a first mover um, opportunity and advantage to be had um, here in the UK. Um, there was another similar business um, that we were aware of at the time uh, called Washio um, that were doing really, really well based out of, the, based out of San Francisco. And we felt that London um, had great potential for a similar service. Um, so I've worked in the, I've been a digital entrepreneur now for 10 or 15 years. So I have a very, very large network. So I was able to mobilize a team relatively quickly. Um, so really within the space of three or four weeks, um, was able to bring the 10 or so people on board that we needed um, to actually build the um, initial um, MVP, minimum viable product um, for the business. Um, and it actually took us not more than maybe three or four months actually to get a minimum viable product to market. Um, so we soft launched uh, Laundrap back at the beginning of well, the tail end of October. Um, and we ran the service for about five or six weeks um, just to test the metrics, to test um, reaction to the product. Um, and just to essentially get the service um, right, um, uh, build into a, a marketing launch the following year. I think, you know, there are a number of challenges with building any digital business like Laundrap. Um, one of the big challenges, of course, that we have um, with Laundrap, unlike some of the other businesses I've, I've helped build um, previous, um, which again were digital businesses, but, but selling digital products, um, that's an awful lot easier than running and operating a business like Laundrap. As you can imagine, one of the biggest challenges we have is from an operation standpoint. You know, there's a huge logistical challenge um, moving an entire fleet around London, dealing with customer um, collections and deliveries. So that obviously represents an ongoing challenge. So a really good example um, of the types of challenges we have. Um, here in London last week, um, uh, they uncovered a World War II bomb um, in South London. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was actually literally across the road from one of our facilities. So it took um, a large part of our supply chain down for two or three days. So you can imagine that represents a, an incredible logistical challenge um, to operate in a business like Laundrap. You know, the other big challenge I think we have with Laundrap as well um, is the fact that we're trying to um, re-educate a consumer to actually do their laundry um, and their dry cleaning in an entirely different way. So we're actually trying to change consumer habit and changing consumer habit is a big challenge um, and it takes a long time um, to do. And obviously a large part of what we need to do with Laundrap is build trust. 
Now, you can't build trust in 10 weeks. Um, so that's another big challenge, and that's part of the reason why we spend so, um, so aggressively on advertising, um, because it helps build the momentum, build the brand awareness, and build trust. It's a very interesting question because actually, you know, we don't see the traditional bricks and mortar dry cleaning and laundrette business uh, businesses um, as our competitor. Um, we don't. We're not necessarily trying to um, change consumer habit around you using your local dry cleaning, uh, sorry, dry cleaner or laundrette. Actually, what we're trying to do is to try and stop people using their washing machines. Um, so this is why we see our competitor as being your washing machine, not necessarily your local business. So that really buys into the vision of what we're trying to do with, La uh, with Laundrap. Um, with Laundrap, we're essentially trying to use the smartphone um, as a remote control for your laundry. I think my advice for entrepreneurs, not only I think in the in the kind of the sharing economy and on demand space, but just generally in the digital space, you know, it's becoming increasingly more difficult and tough um, as the barrier to entry in this space um, continues to rise. Um, one of the things that we did very right at Laundrap very early on was to bring on board a great team, and it's it's quite cliche, but having a great team really opens a lot of doors. Not only do you have great experiences, sorry, great, great experience across the team, um, but you also have shared learning and it also helps massively in terms of raising finance. Um, I think it's fair to say, you know, a, a, an idea um, is great, but it's nothing without a team to execute. Um, and we were very, very fortunate to bring on some great people early on um, that could, that could b both believe and buy into the vision of what we were trying to do and then ultimately execute it which has really helped us in terms of raising, um, certainly initially, you know, we raised uh, one and a half million pounds of, of seed uh, finance um, to launch the minimum viable product of Laundrap. And then subsequently, we've now closed our Series A, uh, which is a further four million pound investment in the business. And I think it's fair to say we couldn't have done that uh, without the great team that's been involved. Um, I think the other thing that I would advise people, certainly moving into the into the sharing economy and on-demand space to consider is definitely user acquisition and 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 um, and how they intend to acquire customers. One of the big learnings for us, given that most of my other businesses have been either national or or or, or international businesses, is actually it's very very difficult um, to acquire customers at, at at such a local level. Um, so having a, 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 an early consideration for, for localized um, user acquisition, I think is very, very important. So one of the things that I'm a big advocate for, not only at Laundrap, but all of my previous businesses as well, is ensuring the business model um, for the company is a marketing driven business model, which essentially means that the marketing budget and user acquisition sits at the top of the forecast and is ultimately the thing that drives the revenue for the company. And as long as you approach it like that, then it really does put the kind of the marketing team and the user acquisition at the heart of the business, which I think in this kind of digital sharing economy, I think is very important.